Hi guys, welcome back to the Fed Up Fab YouTube channel. And today I'm going to show you how to put together a Turbo 5.9, how to build the motor, and why should you listen to some crunchy guy like this in a dirty garage? Because I've probably blown up more 5.9 Magnums than anybody else has. I've built them and blown them up, and I've learned something every time, and I still have not found the limit of the stock bottom end on one of these things, despite putting 18 pounds through it. And if you've seen any of the other videos on the 51, you know these things have lived a hard life. So the first one I blew up, uh, the stock style head gaskets went, took out bearings. Not a fault of the turbo, just happened, I didn't catch it quick enough. The second one is this piston right here, and this is the one I leaned out at Indy. Again, this is all my fault because it leaned out, and this thing still ran. And then the third one I've blown up is the one that's still in the truck. And that's the one I took out down at the Ruckus. And that one was because I never checked the timing when I stabbed the distributor and there's marks of detonation on every cylinder and it had some cheap aftermarket pistons and it broke them. So we're going to put this thing together. This is a 2000 or 2001 5.9 out of a Durango and we're going to build this one and I'm not going to make any dumb errors and I want to run 20 pounds through it and if it lives at 20 we'll go to 25. I want to find what the limit is. I've been at 18 and haven't broke a piston you know not doing something stupid but we'll start there. So this is a junkyard motor I think it's got like 130 on it I don't really remember we just pulled it out of a local junkyard because they're cheap. Like I said it's a 5.9 it's out of a Durango so it actually has the oil pan I need but we need to tear it down. Got to put head gaskets in it, got to put head studs in it, I got a cam to put in it, valve springs. So the first thing we got to do is just tear this thing down to just a short block and then we'll start cleaning it up and putting it back together. Alright, tear down, pretty straightforward just pull everything. I pulled the timing set and cam too because I have that other cam to put in. So I usually don't even pull the lifters when I do it. I just kind of push them up in the bores and they kind of hang out there. So looking through all the cylinders on this thing look, look pretty nice. I got no complaints there except if you come here and look at this cam bearing. All right, can you see that? Yeah, maybe zoom in down there. That cam bearing is bad. Really, really bad. The one in front of it is just as bad. I've never seen them kind of look chunky like that. Like, that's pretty crazy. So, um, yeah. This thing definitely needs cam bearings before it goes back together. And, yeah, I guess we'll flip it over. I wasn't going to pull the pan because it already has the right pan and everything. But if the cam bearings look like that, who knows what the rod and mains look like. So... Let's flip it upside down and see what the bottom looks like. All right, let's pop this middle main bearing off, or main cap off, and see what we get. There's no, like, obviously loose rods, so hopefully this isn't bad, but if the cam bearings look like that, I'm going to have to take a look at these. That doesn't look bad at all. Look at that. It's not bad at all. Alright. Well, that's good. Okay. So I guess we'll pop, pop these rods apart. Let's see what the rod bearings look like. Uh, that one, that one is not so good. It's not the worst thing in the world, but that's definitely got a bad wear spot in it. All right, well, so we can't slap this thing together as is like we did because really all I care about when I put these motors together is that I don't wipe my cam because I have a pretty nice comp cam and those cam bearings are going to wipe it and these rod bearings, this thing would beat itself up pretty hard. This thing sees, you know, my motors see a really, really hard life. So, we could put bearings in the bottom end. I don't know if I can put cam bearings in by myself. Never done it. I know it's pretty tricky. So, 
yeah, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to think about it and figure out what our best option is. I do have the five nine that I knocked bearings out of before. Maybe that's got good cam bearings, and when we we can use that block, I know those rods and that crank is hammered. Or I don't know about the rods. That crank is definitely hammered. Maybe we play a game. We shove this crank in that one. I don't know, but you'll know before we do because I got to think about it. But it's literally going to be the next clip. So that's the junkyard motor that we picked up and needs cam bearings. This is the, basically this is the OG motor from the 51. It is the very first one we put in and I was running these, actually there's still one on here, actually on both sides, these Felpro aftermarket head gaskets that are not MLS and yeah, eight pounds, that's all they're good for. So when it did that, it took out the bottom end so we just tore it down real quick here, and basically the cam bearings all look good, except for one. One has like a nice chunk out of it, just like the other motor. So, I don't really know what's going on here, but I thought these cam bearings would be good. The cam looks perfect. Those look really bad. This one just has one bad little spot. So, I think we're still going to flip this one over and we'll see what the bottom end looks like. sound you want to hear out of your motor. Okay. Alright. Yeah, that's right. This one has no bearing in it because I pulled it because it was shot. So I think also, if I remember correctly, the crank is also shot. So if you come look at this, it's hard to see, but there is a lip there. Right in the middle, it steps up because this crank, this side of the crank is hammered down. You can see my fingernails catching it. All right, so this one, crank is no good. I think, I think the rods might actually be okay. The rods, no, oh no. That rod looks like it got beat up. Well, after much deliberation, we're going to take the rotating assembly out of the newer motor, the junkyard motor, and put it in the original block that I put in the 51 way back when. Because this block has the best cam bearings. The ones that are in the truck are actually just wasted worse than this one, but this has the nicest cam bearings. So we'll take this rotating assembly, flop it in here. I have fresh rod bearings to fix that. And then we'll put it all back together. So we got to knock this thing apart and this one apart and put them together. So we'll get started on that. Okay, we've got both motors torn down. She got this one cleaned up on the bottom, so I couldn't get main bearings, which was kind of bugging me, but it turns out this thing has like what looks like brand new main bearings. But the nice thing is they're already kind of worn into that crank, so we're going to take the main bearings out of here, put them in here with the crank out of there, and then the main caps off this block, so the caps are staying with the block. And that should all make it happy, I'll have good main bearings, and then I got brand new rod bearings, so we're going to clean these bearings up. Lube them up. I got some uh, assembly lube. It's really nice grease. Works way better than the sticky oil stuff because it doesn't run away. So we're just going to start putting it back together. Put the crank in first and then we'll start putting the pistons in one by one with brand new rod bearings.
Okay, whole short blocks back together. Uh, good main bearings. These were that was one of the rod bearings that came out, so that's why I put new rod bearings in because that's not the greatest. But if you start with a good motor, you don't have to do all this. This was just because that one had some nasty cam bearings, and I don't want to lose my good cam. So we just have basically a stock short block and a couple things: main bolts, stock main bolts, rod bolts, stock rod bolts. I don't touch them. Stock everything. Ring gap, didn't touch it, it's stock. I've never gapped rings on these motors. I've never even measured them, but I've never had one break because of ring gap. Like I showed you earlier, I melted one because it leaned out. I knocked a hole in one because it detonated. I've never touched the ring gap and I've run 18 pounds on them. So I don't think it's necessary. And what I do want to find out is what is the limit? So this is a totally stock short block. If you had a good one, you don't even need to open it up. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw the pan on and the oil pump and oil pump pickup. And that basically buttons up the bottom end. You don't have to touch it if yours is good. We'll flip it over and we'll get to the stuff that you actually have to do to make one of these things hold boost. So there's a little bit more than I wanted to do with this thing. But, you know, it is what it is when you get a cheap junkyard motor. So we'll get to it. Alright, now to the stuff that matters. And that these magnums the head gaskets like this is a, a felpro it's a stock style one i ran these eight pounds every time these will blow at eight pounds guaranteed actually the stock ones seem to run a little better these are 1008s supposedly they were better i didn't really do any better what you need are the cometic mls gaskets so these are multi-layer three layers and they're made of steel but these need Pretty much a perfect surface to seal. According to the box, they want a surface finish of a 50 RA, which means you should have the block deck to put these on. And I'm going to show you what I do. And I've done this on every motor, and I've never had a problem with them. These have always sealed. It's really kind of hokey, and I didn't know if it was going to work, and that's why I never really showed it before because I didn't want to give anybody any bad ideas if it didn't work. But to get the surface finish good enough for these, I just use it a little, a little electric DA sander, 120 grit, and I basically go over the whole deck. The trick is, don't push hard, keep it really flat and keep moving, and go through a lot of discs. Don't let them gum up. Basically, you just want to get, I'll show you at the end, but you just want to get a nice shiny surface, no weird gunk, gunk or anything or build up, but you just, real fast, just keep moving. see it chews up the edges pretty quick so you got to keep moving you can already see it's starting to clean up but I've done this on every magnum I did this on the Hemi it's kind of the best way to get them real clean you just got to go until you get them nice and smooth but you got to keep moving if you dig in somewhere you're gonna end up with a gasket leak but it saves you from having to book your engine at the machine shop so this has been a lot quicker for me it works pretty well drop the heads on I'm actually gonna put the cam in and this is the cam I've been running in the truck for a while it's a comp can't read the number you can go back and look at the old video where I put it in but it's a relatively mild actually it's really mild it's like 218 220 I wanted something much bigger but you know COVID off the shelf but it's been running pretty good so I'm gonna stuff this in here and then then we'll drop the, the lifters in and we'll put the heads on and we'll finish that I got the block all cleaned up but I'll show you that we go to put the heads on, but I'm just going to snake this thing in here for now. And then we can start putting the lifters in. And then it'll be off to the heads. So I got the cam in and I got the timing set on. So I run, it's a comp double roller on this thing. It's been really nice. It keeps everything perfectly in time, especially with the bigger cams. 
These things don't have a lot of piston to valve clearance, although they should be good with this cam. But you just don't want a sloppy setup. On these Magnums too, you gotta put the dots straight up and down. You don't point them together like a Chevy, they both go straight up and down. And this gear down here has three different spots, so you gotta make sure you hit the right one so you don't advance or retard the cam. But that's all pretty straightforward. I just gotta tighten down the cam bolt. We'll throw the lifters in and then we can do the heads. All right, all the lifters are in. I got all the hold downs in, which in case you forget, the, the uh, oil hole here, there's only one of them. It goes up, so when it's in there, basically oils the top and runs down around. But now that all that's together, I have ARP head studs. You gotta run head studs with the gaskets. Pretty sure that's the only way it'll actually hold. I have not blown a head gasket with the Kometics and these head studs. And I don't remember the part number, I'll put it at the bottom. Because they don't specifically call out the right kit for the stock Magnum heads, but I'll put it in there. But when you put these in, they go in dry and they go in hand tight. Don't torque these down. Just run them in until they don't go anymore. You don't want to put all that stress into it. And when you do that, make sure it doesn't push any oil or anything out. Because you need the deck surface to be perfectly clean and perfectly dry. Same thing with the heads. The way I took that sander across the block, I do the exact same thing to the heads, and that gets them nice and clean. And then you just take your head gasket, and these are nice because they're the same, no matter which way you go. You can't screw them up. They're not like the Hemis, where I had it on upside down. And then you just drop them on here, and you fight with them a little bit. Oh, actually, that one's pretty easy. but. And then drop the heads on and torque them down. It's pretty straightforward. I got a little spot here I don't really like. I got to clean up. But put that on, drop the heads, and we'll go through it and I'll show you how to torque them. All right, heads on, studs are in. So you get, you get a nice big nut with a nice big washer from ARP. So you got to use their assembly lube because their specs are based off this. If you don't use this and you put them in with something else and you torque them to their specs, you're probably going to be under torqued. But... You gotta put this on there, slip them in, it's tedious. And then you gotta put it on here, make sure it's on the threads. It's tedious, but it's worth it because you're not gonna have a problem. Okay, so we got all the nuts and washers lubed up. And what I like to do, because I'm lazy, is I take my gun and I set it to the hand tight setting, which I verified it is hand tight. And I just run them down with that, just so they all get kind of flush. I don't have to sit here by hand. But when you do these, there's two rows of them. And kind of what you want to do is you want to make sure the head torques flat and it doesn't kind of pull any weird. So you start in the middle. So I always start the bottom middle and then I go to the, the top middle. And then you basically make a spiral where you're working your way out. So you come over here, hit that guy down here, and then over to this guy. So you're just making this big spiral. So now we'll come back here and hit this one. As long as you work from the center out, it's pretty much all you need to do. So they're all hand tight. Now I gotta go through and actually torque them. So I start at, what does the board say? 35 foot pounds. I've done this so many times I wrote it on the board. So I'll do 35 on all of them because ARP wants three steps. And then I'll go to 80 and then I'll finish them off at 110. And then I just go back over all of them, make sure they're at 110. Do both sides. It's tedious, but I haven't blown a head gasket since I started using these studs and gaskets. So for valve train, as you can see here, these are just stock rockers, stock guide plates, stock push rods. I did put fresh push rods in this motor way back when, just to make sure there wasn't any gunk in there. But what I do have, and you can see them over here, is they are aftermarket valve springs. So stock valves, but aftermarket valve springs, aftermarket retainers, and seats. And that's all from Hughes Performance. And that's purely for the bigger cam, because the stock valve springs won't handle won't handle any bigger of a cam, but I mean, this motor's, you know, pretty much stock. And I've been putting 18 pounds through them and we're gonna turn it up and see what it'll really do. But there's not, there's not a whole lot of magic here, but I still gotta put these rockers back on and then the timing cover, but 
that's about it because I got a ton of repairs to do to the truck before we can actually stick this motor back in. Everything in there melted and or burned, so I've got to replace all that. And I can't even put the valve covers on because you can't get the motor in with the valve covers on and the headers. It's a whole mess. But I'll get these back on here and that's pretty much all it is. The intake I'm running on this thing is the stock Magnum intake. And I mean, I've shown you guys that before. There's nothing done to that other than I resealed it. So it's not magic. These motors are pretty darn stout. You know, they, they take boost pretty well. So I'm just going to button this up, come back next time and we'll put it in there and we'll get it running. But we got a whole lot of fireproofing to do first.